Welcome to the Java programming series and today we will understand how to write down the program to print below pattern. So before we jump into the program, let's try to analyze the pattern. So here we have to print the five lines and in each line we have to print some dynamic number. So in the first line we have to print one number. In the second row we have to print two numbers. In the third row we have to print three numbers, right? So similar program we did into the previous video. So in the previous video, we did the same program, but the structure looks little different. So let me just try to copy the logic that we did in the previous video and let's try to run this program. And let's observe that what are the changes we require to do. So you can see here what changes we need to do. So before we printing the one, we have to print the four spaces. You can see one, two, three, four. So four space then one digit. In the second row, one, two, three, three space and two digit. In the third row, one, two, so two space and three digit. So before we print the number, we have to manage the spaces as well. And the space is not constant, it's a dynamic. So we can't hard code the space in this program. So we have to take the for loop to print the space. Also, where we will write this space for loop. So you can see here in the first row, first of all, we have to print the space. So inside the I for loop, first we will print the space. So here we will write the for loop to print the space. After printing the space, we have to print the digit and then we have to do the enter. Again in the next row, we have to print some space. Then we have to print the digit and then we have to print the enter. So let's try to take the for loop. So I can just write down for an integer. So here we have to take some another variable because we are already using i and j. So let's say s, s for the space. So I'll start from one, s less than or equal to. So here I don't know the condition, right? I still don't know how many times I have to execute this loop. So I'll keep it blank. Let's say s plus plus. And here I will just try to print single space. And also very important thing, we have to remove the ln. So whatever we are writing inside this for loop, it will get printed into the single line and then we will do the line break. So now we just have to identify what is the condition, how many times we have to execute this for loop so that we are getting the desired pattern. So now let's try to find out the logic that how many times we have to execute this space for loop. And it's very, very important. If you can able to understand this logic, you will able to understand all the pattern logic. So let's try to relate I and S. Okay. So in the first row, when I is equal to one, how many times we have to execute this space for loop? So you can see in the one, in the first row, we have to print the four space. So S will be four. When I is equal to two, that means second row, how many times we have to print space? It's a three. Right. When i is equal to three, we have to print space two times. You can see uh, two times space and three digit. Digit we are getting. This for loop is responsible to print the digit. We are just focusing on the space. So when i is equal to three in the third row, we need the two space. When i is equal to four, we need the one space. When i is equal to five, we need the zero space. Perfect. So can you see some relation between i and s? Yes, you can say we are getting one constant number. What is the i plus s? So you can see 1 plus 4, 5. 2 plus 3, 5. 3 plus 2, 5. Right. So we can say i plus s is equal to 5. So if we want s, then I can just say 5 minus i. So we have to execute the space for loop 5 minus i. Right. Perfect. So let me just try to write down that s less than or equal to 5 minus i and let me just try to run this program and you can see that we are getting the desired pattern. So here you have to understand how to create a relationship of space with the i. Okay. Here also we are creating the relationship with the j and i. Perfect. So what is the usefulness of this program in real life? We are not using this program, right? We are not printing the, we are not printing this kind of a pattern in real job then why we are doing this program? So the purpose of doing this program, you will get clarity that how for loop is working, right? It's an exercise. So if you do this kind of a exercise and if you can able to understand this, 
then definitely you will feel very confident while working on the real time job right so it's very very important to understand this fundamental logic perfect so that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it if you have any comments regarding this video try to write down into the comment section thanks everyone and we'll see you into the next video